Ladies and gentlemen, what is going on? It is Dylan back again with another DJI Mavic Pro tutorial video. And today I am going to show you guys how to do what I call a orbiting hyperlapse. So what we are gonna wanna do is find us a point of interest, something that's interesting, something uh, that we can focus on, something that we can orbit. And so, as you can see, I'm flying backwards here. Um, and we are probably just about over what I'm going to call our point of interest. There it is. Which is just the football, uh, the varsity football field here. Small town, hometown, small town I live in. Um, it is their field house where their locker rooms are and all that good stuff. So we're going to call it our point of interest. So the first thing you do is we want to find your point of interest. And we're going to do the point of interest intelligent flight mode. And so I've already done that a couple times. I'll have the latest video point of interest tutorial linked at the end of this video if you need to see it uh, further detail where I slow it down. But far left part of the screen, the three white icons, we're going to click the bottom remote, which takes you to your intelligent flight modes. You're going to swipe over one screen, upper right corner, you'll see point of interest. Click on that. We are over our point of interest, so on the bottom right, we're going to click record POI. Now here's the part to where we are going to set our radius or how far away, how big of a radius we're going to do around um, our point of interest. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a pretty big one here. Right now we're at about 600 foot radius. Let's go to about, let's go ahead and do it at about a thousand feet. And there we are at about a thousand feet. Okay, so looks good. Now we're gonna click apply. And I'm gonna set my speed to about, oh, 11 miles an hour or so. Then we're gonna click hot. So as you guys know, or may not know, if you haven't seen the uh, tutorial, or if you aren't a master of point of interest intelligent flight mode yet, right now I'm not controlling the drone. It is just going to be orbiting that uh, field house there. So think of the uh, field house as the sun and think of the drone as the earth. It's just revolving around it and it's gonna be in a perfect circle. So now, as far as the hyperlapse go, a hyperlapse is basically just a time lapse. And uh, But the difference between a time lapse and a hyperlapse is with a hyperlapse, you have a point of interest, something that you have in the same part of your each frame as a camera moves. So this works out perfect because uh, this is just uh, pretty easy to do as the drone's just flying itself in a big circle. And naturally there's a uh, <laughs> there's a basketball tournament going on right there. You see the uh, basketball field house. So that's why there's buses in the gym and all the uh, parking lots crowded. So anyways, let's cut to the chase. We need to switch to photo mode because in hyperlapses or time lapses, you take photos. So above the red record button on the far right, you'll click that little white icon that switches to photo mode. As you'll see, the ratio changes from 16 to 9 to 4, 3. Now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to hit the little settings button below the white shutter button on the right screen, as we did. Then up at the top, you're going to want to hit the little photo icon, the little camera. Then you're going to click photo. Then at the very bottom, you'll see time shot. Click that, and we want two seconds. Probably the smaller the interval, the better. And this means that it's automatically going to fire a shot every two seconds. So... Let's remember where we are right now because we're going to want to do one full orbit. So we basically got that road down there in the corner. We're going to start. Now, the drone is taking pictures every two seconds all on its own. And what we're going to do is, is we're going to let it do a full circle until it gets back to that part that we started. We're going to let it take pictures. And so it's going to take a while. And we could have made the drone go faster, but what I found from experience is, is the slower the drone moves, the more movement there will be in the each photo. I know, and that's kind of hard to understand. If you understand time lapses really well, you know what I'm talking about. Um, it, basically, there's no right or wrong way to do any time lapse or hyperlapse. It's just all uh, depending on the settings and what you uh, favor. So I will quit talking now and we'll go ahead and speed this up. Okay guys, so now we are getting closer to where we uh, started. Still got a little ways to go, but I didn't wanna 
bore you guys to tears uh showing all parts of that just kind of wanted to fast forward um a little bit and uh so now we're getting closer over there to that road still got about a quarter ways to go but the next thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to open up adobe premiere pro which is my editing software of choice that i do all my editing in and i actually might start doing some premiere pro tutorials um kind of start from the beginning to show you guys if you're interested in getting into editing videos uh, i use premiere pro and i can kind of just start from the front maybe go from there let me know in the comments if that's something that you would be interested in um so yeah anyways uh there's the gym so you'll notice that we are getting a little bit closer to the spot to where we'll make a full 360 degree orbit around the uh field house over there the white one at the football field still got a little ways to go i'll uh speed it up for you guys And I believe down here at this road, we had it about in the corner, so we're getting close. I'm going to let it go back further, a little bit further just to be safe. Always want to make sure that you get what you need. You can always cut it short if you need to. So let's just call it good about right there. We're just going to tap on the right side to get it to stop taking photos. And now it is done taking photos. So now we're going to hit the uh, red X over there on the left to stop it from orbiting. And now, guys, we are just back into regular uh, flight mode. So now I have control of the sticks, and I'm going to bring it back home. And the next thing you're going to see is we are going to be in Adobe Premiere Pro. Okay, guys, so now as you can see, we are here in Adobe Premiere Pro and down here in the bottom left panel. I'm not going to, just a side note, I'm not going to go into hardcore um, why I did this, why I did this here in this video on Adobe Premiere Pro instructions for it. As I alluded to earlier, I may start doing some Adobe Premiere Pro tutorial videos. But for now, guys, um, I'm just showing you how to do this if you do use Adobe Premiere Pro. So bottom left panel here, we're going to right click, new item, sequence and I'll collapse these just to make it easier for you if you're following along. Right here under AVC HD, I always choose this, then I choose 1080p, and I always choose the 1080p 30 frames per second. We're gonna click OK. So now we have our timeline down here in the bottom right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back over here where we start our new sequence. We're gonna right click, and we're going to import. Now, here are, I put my photos right here on my desktop inside of a hyperlapse uh, folder on my desktop. Here are all the photos that our drone, the DJI Mavic Pro, took every two seconds while it was orbiting around that field house. So as you can see, here is all of them. Now what you're going to want to do is, is you're obviously going to want to take your micro SD card out first, put it in a folder, and then you'll have all your pictures right here from your, uh, from your shoot earlier. So we're going to click on the very first one, and then down here in the bottom left you'll see options and by default, I believe it's unchecked, but you're gonna to wanna to click on image sequence. And then what that will do, and then you're gonna click import. And then what that'll do is that just already stitches all the photos together. So you're gonna drag this to your timeline and just keep existing settings. And as you can see, this, this, this whole um, hyperlapse is only about six seconds, almost seven seconds, 6.22. So, um, the first thing you're going to want to do is right now it's cropped in to fit this 1920 by 1080 so we want to show more of the photo so you're going to click on the actual photo here just a single click then up here in the upper left you're going to click effect controls and then here on your scale you're, you can either uh, hover over it and then drag left or drag right or you can click on it and you can push the down arrow on your keypad which is what I'm doing right now until you see the black bars, you don't want any black bars. So you're wanting to do it just enough to where there's not black bars. So right there. And then on the position right here, this 960 and this 540, if you drag left and right right here, this will take the photo left and right. If you drag left and right right here, as you can see, it takes the photo up and down. So you get to choose. You don't want any black above or black below. So you can choose where at in the particular photo you want it to show. So I kind of like it where it was by default, so I'm just gonna click this little button here and I'm just gonna leave it right there. And so as you can see now on our timeline, whenever we move from left and right, 
it did a pretty good job of keeping that uh, field house in the middle of the frame. But I'll just push space bar, which shows it. But see how there's just a little jitter here and there? And of course, it's, it's real rough right now because it's not completely pre-rendered. Let me go ahead and pre-render it so I can show you guys what I'm about to do and the difference that it makes. First of all, you need to do an I. Hit I on the keyboard right here for input. Come to the end. And you're going to push O for output. And then you're going to click Sequence, which I know you guys can't see. And you're going to click Render In to Out. So what that's going to do is it's pre-rendering the file to where it'll show it really smoothly or how it's actually going to appear and how it's going to look. So again, guys, I, I know there's probably a lot of you that are getting overwhelmed uh, if you don't know Adobe Premiere Pro very well. And I'm, I apologize for that again. I may start doing some Adobe Premiere Pro tutorial videos. But uh, I just wanted to show you guys this orbiting hyperlapse, what I'm talking about here. So it's almost done pre-rendering. And um, it's not going to quite be done here. We've got a little bit more doctoring to do to it, a little bit more editing. So that's what it looks like. That's what it's going to look like st coming straight off the camera. And so what we want to do to smooth that out a little bit is what they call um, warp, stable, warp stabilization. So before we can add our warp stabilizer to this, what we need to do is since this was, since this is cropped out, remember how we had to zoom out and fix it with the black bar zill? We need to right click and we need to click nest, which makes that boom. Now it's a flattened video with that right there in, th in those uh, diameters or that, uh, what am I trying to say? That ratio. So now we're going to find our warp stabilizer. You could type in warp and it would find it, but I already have it in my favorites folder under my name, Dylan. Right there, warp stabilizer. We're going to drag onto it. It's always set to 50% on the smoothness. I like to change it to about 30, no, not 25, about 35. So now as you can see right here it says uh, the percentage and we got to wait for it to go through every frame and what it does is it just kind of smooths it by cropping and uh, looking for reference points to make everything as smooth as it possibly can and uh, it turns out pretty good it, it really helps it out so uh, let's let it get that done and here we got about five seconds left for it to get done, warp stabilizing, and it'll show, you'll see the difference, guys. You'll see what I'm talking about, how much smoother it is. So now that we have warp stabilized it, we are gonna go ahead and we are going to export or render this video by clicking File, and then Export Media. And on our export settings, I always do my format at H.264, and then on Preset, it's going on YouTube, so I just do YouTube 1080p HD, and then this is where you name it, and we're just gonna call it Hyperlapse. And now we're gonna hit export, and it's gonna be exported to my desktop, and I will show you guys, now I will show you guys after this is done, I will show you guys what the Hyperlapse turned out to look like. <laughs> 